in this video lecture we will discuss about the Gauss law of electrostatics. Gauss law state that total amount of flux or net flux in a closed surface is equal to 1 over epsilon naught times charge enclosed in it. So this means that any type of closed 3D surface have a flux if the charge is present inside it and the total amount of flux will be 1 over epsilon naught time charge present or enclosed in it. So we can basically write a definition of Gauss law as or statement of Gauss laws A as Gauss law state that the total or net flux in a closed surface closed surface usually these closed surface are three dimensional surface is equal to one hour epsilon naught times total amount of charge enclosed in it or we can rewrite the definition or statement of a Gauss law as total flux in a closed surface is equal to 1 hour epsilon naught time of <clears throat> magnitude of charges enclosed in it. So you can write Gauss law in a form of equations that total amount of electric flux in a closed surface is equal to 1 over epsilon naught time of charges enclosed in it. The student, please note that surface could be different types of surface. There could be different types of surfaces such as this could be a cone. We can have a rectangular surface. And we may have a cylindrical surface. In all those types of surfaces, the net amount of flux, if there is suppose there is a present there is a charge Q naught present in all these surfaces, then the net amount of flux or total amount of electric flux uh, at the surface of these 3D surfaces uh, will be 1 over epsilon naught time Q naught of charge in, enclosed in them. So now, this student, as you know that electric flux is defined as number of electric field of lines number of electric field lines passing perpendicular to the surface area so we can basically write an equation for electric flux as 
phi E is equal to number of electric field of line uh, passing through surface area. And so the area is also a vector quantity. quantity. So electric field of line is uh, also a vector quantity, but the electric flux is a scalar quantity and it is a dot product of electric field intensity and the area of vector. So now, suppose this is a surface S. And electric field of lines are passing perpendicular to the surface of surface uh, of uh, surface s and as you know that the area vector is basically it is a perpendicular to the surface it will be like this area vector will be like this whereas the surface will be perpendicular to the area vector so it will be like this so now the electric flux uh, basically electric field of line or intensity are basically parallel to the area vector and whereas electric field intensity is perpendicular to the surface and due to this maximum amount of electrical field of lines are possible to pass through the surface. So this means that if we <clears throat> rewrite this equation we can say electric flux is equal to e a as you know that dot product is equal to cos of theta so we can write this equation as e a cos of theta so if angle between electric field of lines and area vector is zero then this means or if the area vector and electric field intensity are parallel to each other so angle will be zero so the flux in this case will be e into a so this will be a maximum flux for a surface having an area vector parallel to the electric field intensity similarly different if the angle between area vector and electric field intensity is 90 in this case electric flux will be equal to e a cos of 90 and cos of 90 you know that it is zero so in this case electric flux will be zero so now we are considering a case where electric field of lines are parallel to the elect to the area vectors so we are considering this case now if we want to calculate electric flux in the surface S, but a very small surface, very small part of the surface S, then how we can write the electric flux? Consider that we are going to cal calculate the electric flux of this small surface. How much will be electric flux of this surface? Since you know that the surface the, is very small, so the electric flux to a surface will be very small and we can basically write it as a d flux so this means that <clears throat> the electric field of lines are usually constant so we can write them as e but the area of this surface is very small so we will write this area of of the the small surface as da so the, the equation of electric flux for this small surface will become flux is equal to electric field intensity into d in a small area vector and the flux is small so we will write d flux now in case if we want to calculate electric flux of this whole area then this what will be electric flux of this whole area we need to use integral in this case so net electric flux or total electric flux will be equal to integral into e d a 
integral for a whole surface. And you know that integral for the whole surface, the different differential d will cancel the integral, and we will basically get electric flux E dot A. And a, as you know that E dot A is equal to E A cos of theta. So electric flux through a total surface will be through, through, through a whole surface as will be E A cos of theta. And since the surface vector and area, since area vector and electric field intensity are parallel, so the net electric flux will basically become E A. So basically, this is basically a general equation for electric flux. Now, dear student, let us uh, derive the Gauss's equation for a closed surface. You know that according to the Gauss's law, total flux or net flux through a closed surface is equal to 1 over epsilon naught time of charges enclosed in it. This is basically equation for a Gauss's law. So now, consider that we have a closed cylindrical spherical surface. Consider that this is a closed spherical surface. When we say that this is a surface S. And there is a positive charge. Suppose there is a positive charge plus Q. Plus Q enclosed in the surface so the charge is basically present at the center of this cylindrical spherical surface so from the center the distance between this the charge and the surface is basically is equal to a radius of a sphere now Consider that we take a very small portion of the cylindrical surface. Suppose this is a small portion of a spherical surface. And we say that the area of this portion is dA. So now, as you know, dear student, the positive charge have associated electric field of lines. For, and these electric field of lines come out from the positive charge like this. So now, similarly for this surface dA, the electric field of line will also pass through the surface like this. So the area, vect uh, area vector will be basically perpendicular, uh, will be basically parallel. In this case, area vector will be basically, area vector will be parallel to the electric field lines. Clear. to the electric field of lines or electric field intensity which means that angle between area vector and electric field intensity will be zero so we can write uh, the electric flux for this smaller coarser surface as electric flux d phi e is equal to e suppose that we have constant electric field of line E in dot dA, which is a smaller area. So suppose we say it as equation number one. Similarly, if we considered another smaller area, suppose this is another smaller area. 
and we are taking the size of area is same. Suppose that the area vector for this area is dA. Similarly, the electric field lines for this area will also be parallel. Like this. So this area, suppose that we, this area as the area is same, so the electric flux for this area will be also d phi e will also be equal to e d a vectors. So now, let the student take another smaller area. Suppose we take another smaller area, this as another smaller area in the in the sphere surface. So in this smaller area, the electric field lines E will be basically they will be per parallel to the surface vector to the area vector. Sorry. To the area vector like this so again we will get an uh, uh, we will get as d small flux in the smaller area as e dot d a and we say it as equation number three now just been keep in mind that in order to get a total flux in this closed spherical surface we need to take uh, the smaller areas over the whole surface and continuously smaller areas over the whole surface and then we will add the electric flux of all these smaller areas and after completing the uh, uh, the electric flux to all those smaller area we will basically aid and combine them and at the end we will get net flux so now in order to get a flux over the whole surface we will basically take an integral over the over the all areas and we can write the equation as d phi e integral it is an electric flux in a closed path so we will use a circle in an integral which basically indicate electric flux over the closed path please note that integral basically it indicate uh, all the areas all or the all the small pieces of the uh, all the small pieces of the combination of the all the or addition of the all smaller pieces in the spherical surface so basically we'll get that d uh, uh, integral of flux uh, is equal to basically uh, is equal to uh, we will again take an integral closer integral into e dot d a So now, dear student, please keep in mind that that here in the spherical surface, the electric field of lines are constant, which means that electric field intensity through these small surfaces is constant. So basically, the equation we will basically get this equation as electric flux integral of electric flux. In a closed surface is equal to integral and we will basically take elect since electric field intensity is constant we will take it out and then d into a so as you know that integral will basically cancel with a differential and similarly integral will basically cancel with this differential so we will get basically electric flux for whole spherical surface will be equal to e electric field of closed surface in a closed surface into area of the closed surface so as you know that since the area vector 
and uh, since you know that the uh, uh, electric field intensity and area vector for this surface are parallel so we can write that electric flux net electric flux is equal to e a into cos of zero and cos of zero is equal to one so we can get electric flux as e into a now Dear student, as you know that area of a sphere, area of sphere is equal to area of sphere is equal to 4 pi r square. So suppose that this is equation number 4. So we will apply uh, or we will include we will incorporate the value of area of sphere in equation number 4. So we will get that total flux is equal to E into 4 pi r square. So the total flux through a spherical surface pi E is equal to E into 4 pi r square r is basically suppose this is equation number five r is a radius of a sphere now this trend as you know that electric field intensity e is equal to one over four pi epsilon naught into q divided by r square since you know that electric field intensity let us drive the equation for electric field intensity as you know that force electric field intensity is equal to force exerted by a unit charge q naught so force as you know that force between the charge is a coulomb force it is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught into q into q naught divided by r square so now uh, uh, an electric flow intensity is also equal to q naught uh, force divided by q naught so q naught will basically cancel q naught and we will get electric field intensity as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught <clears throat> q divided by r square okay so this is basically suppose this is an equation a so due to this <clears throat> we will incorporate the value of electric field of intensity uh, which is basically uh, written which is mentioned here this in equation number five this equation in, in equation number five or in equation where we have we want to calculate a total flux so the total flux e will be become by incorporating uh, this equation in electric flow intensity as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q which is a charge enclosed in a spherical surface in divided by r square into 4 pi ep r square into a surface now, 4 pi r square is basically area of a um, area of a uh, sphere so now this r square will cancel r square 4 pi will cancel 4 pi so basically we will get a net flux through a closed surface as q divided by epsilon naught and we can basically write uh, q with uh, sub in subscript of uh, uh, charge q as a closed charge or charge pleasant in a closed surface so basically this is this equation is known as a Gauss equation we state that the total flux total flux in a closed surface is equal to
1 hour epsilon naught time charge enclosed in it. Resident, please keep in mind that Gauss law is valid for all those surfaces which are three dimensional and closed surfaces. So, this is all about the Gauss law of electrostatics. Let me conclude this topic. Gauss law electrostatics state that electric flux or net flux uh, or a magnitude of a flux in a closed surface is equal to 1 over epsilon naught time of charges enclosed in it. Just in please uh, one and please note one of the interesting point. It is it is basically the, the magnitude of flux basically depend on the total number of charges um, charge Q uh, enclosed in a surface. In uh, suppose that if the surface has Q1, Q2 and Q3 and so on charges then total flux will be basically will be due to all those charges and it will be a magnitude of all those charges. So net amount of charges in a closed surface basically they will contribute to total flux and it will be equal to 1 over epsilon naught time to the magnitude of all net charges. So it's not limited to, God's law is not limited to one charge. There could be many charges present inside the closed surface and we need to take a combination or addition of all charges and the total magnitude of charges will basically cause a net flux in a closed surface. So this is all about the God's law. So thank you for watching this lecture.